Hey everybody. Yes, it's me, Shannon from Pish Posh Reselling with another video this week already so soon. Um, but I mentioned in the last video yesterday, the what sold video that I wanted to do a listing challenge. Now I wasn't quite thinking I would do it this soon, <laughs> but I kind of, I was looking at the calendar and I realized that I could fit in a listing challenge, um, like a 10 day listing challenge and end it at the end of the month. And so I just thought, why wait? Let's just go ahead and start getting this stuff listed. So what I'm doing is a hundred items in 10 days listing challenge, and it's all vintage and it's all going on Ruby Lane. So the reason I wanted to do this is not only, well, I have a backlog of vintage items to list. I have a backlog of pretty much everything. Um, I bought some more vintage on my trip, as I mentioned, and a, I want to go thrifting again because it's a, it's a addiction, like many of you understand. And I have to, I feel better about sourcing again if I could get some of the stuff listed. Not just the stuff I just found, but I have some boxes of, um, items that I bought last year at yard sales. And sometimes what happens is because clothing is such a bread and butter item for us, and actually we can make pretty good money in fourth quarter, fall into winter with jackets and sweaters and pants and things like that, that that tends to get the bulk of our attention. And all my favorite little vintage things kind of get pushed to the side. So because it's summer slowdown and, um, it just seems like it's a good chance to try to get a bunch of that stuff listed. Okay. So, um, I also wouldn't mind hitting a few more yard sales this summer. And that's where I do tend to find better vintage than at my thrift stores, if that makes sense. I also, my Ruby Lane shop, I really want to get that bulked up. I want to give it some serious attention like I used to with my Etsy shop and really get a bunch of product in there getting ready for fourth quarter, which will be here before you know it. Um, anyway, so I can use summer slowdown time in order to do that. So what I'm doing, it's a hundred items in the next 10 days, starting today. I just listed my first 10 items today. So it's Wednesday, the 20, 21st, and then we'll end on the 30th. And, you know, that might not seem like a lot of items to some of you who list quite a bit, but it is a lot for me with all the other obligations and things that I have going on in my life. And as well as the fact that that's just Ruby Lane. I also need to keep eBay going. I need to keep feeding that beast as well. <laughs> and eBay and then cross posting like I do to Poshmark, keeping those two going because that is where the bulk of my income comes from. Um, but that might, you know, I can, I've done well with vintage in the past if I can focus on it. So anyway, it'll just be fun. So the challenge with for me with listing vintage as opposed to pieces of clothing is that I, I tend to spend more time in the research. And the research is fun. I go into rabbit holes. Um, you need to maybe dig a little bit deeper. Finding comps might not be quite as easy. Um, so my plan for this is I'm going to try to do 10 listings a day. There may be a couple days where I can't do 10. So, you know, I might have to do 15 or I might, you know, catch up, whatever, however that works. But I'm, my goal is to kind of just break it up into an even like 10 items a day. So my plan is to spend time the day before the evening before prepping the items because that's the other thing. Sometimes they need cleaning. Sometimes they need polishing. They need sticker removal because I'm not always good about taking thrift store stickers off as soon as I buy the item. Um, if I can get the photos done the day ahead of time, I will do that. But that's not an absolute necessity because that actually goes pretty quickly. I'm going to take the measurements, make note of any flaws or condition issues and things like that, and then research pricing. So I'm really doing the bulk of the work, like the night or the afternoon before, and then the listing process goes pretty quickly for me. Ruby Lane's listing page to me is super simple. So anyway, uh, so that's what I did. I was, I realized I could start this challenge today. And so I yesterday gathered up my, the 10 items I wanted to list, 
got them cleaned, got them polished, um, did my research, and it did. It took a bulk of the time, at least a couple hours to do those 10 items. Now, some things will go faster than others. Some didn't need research. Um, and I'm not like, you know, I say a couple hours, but I don't always like just stay. Like I pop over, I'm really bad. I pop over to Facebook. I, you know, I do a bunch of other things in the middle of all that. Um, so, but this morning or earlier this afternoon, I was able to list the 10 items from yesterday and that only took me about 30 minutes. So, um, I think this is all pretty doable. So today I'm just going to finish up this video and then I'm going to gather up my 10 items for tomorrow, see if they're ready to go and, um, get my pricing information, all that kind of stuff. So then I don't have to do as I'm listing, I'm just putting the information down into the listing. I don't have to second guess anything about pricing. Um, so what I thought also would be fun is I've done this kind of to a smaller degree before, but when I gather up my 10 items, I'm kind of doing them by theme. Okay. So, um, you know, the theme can be, there's like an endless possibility of theme. I can do different categories. Um, I could do it by era. I can do it by style. I can do it by color. So I kind of would gather up 10 items that kind of fit together and then they show up in my shop all together, like following this theme. So like in the past I did one day, I gathered up a bunch of like Western, like cowboy, you know, just different type themed items together like that. Um, horses were included in that. Um, and it was interesting. And then one, you know, then I did like kitchenware. Um, then I did rustic things that were very rustic farmhouse. So that's kind of the idea. I have, I have a few different ideas already. I'm going to, I have a grouping of owls that I'll probably list all together. I might not have 10 items with owls, but then I can add a few other little kitschy type things to it. I could have a group of 10 of like games and toys and dolls. I might do a mid-century kitchen day. Um, I might do a mod, uh, you know, 60s kind of kind of day. And then another rustic farmhouse. So, I mean, I, I collect vintage from all different, as I'm sourcing all different time periods and styles and things like that. So I just think it would be fun. It, it makes me not only list things I just found, but it makes me dig into my profit pile a little bit to, to find things that match the theme. And I just think it would be fun. So I'm curious to see as I do this challenge, how it'll affect my sales. Um, it, that's not really the main point for this, um, this one, because we are in summer slowdown. I'm not expecting a huge amount of sales. Um, that's not the main goal in this, but I just want to see the consistent listing to Ruby Lane, how that does affect things. It's just kind of a little experiment, you know, um, sales are a little bit low in general, you know, for the year compared to other years, summer, like I mentioned. And then this weekend, Ruby Lane is holding one of their, um, tag sales. If you've seen any of my Ruby Lane videos, I've talked about it a little bit, um, but they, they're doing a 50% off tag sale this weekend. So I think a lot of the potential buyers end up getting more interested in those things. And so the new items that I'm adding, you know, unless it's something that obviously somebody has to have, um, it could affect sales a little bit this weekend. So we'll, we'll see. Like I said, my main goal is to just get things into my shop. Things can't sell if they're not listed. And I have just too much awesome vintage laying around here that needs to get out in the view of people. Okay, so I wanted to show you the 10 things that I listed this morning or today. And I'm going to keep myself accountable by using you guys and using this using YouTube. I'm not doing a video every a big video every day about the challenge, but I will probably throw a YouTube short up after I've listed my 10 items or however many items I list that day. I'll throw a YouTube short up there to show the items that I listed. Um, I might do a similar type thing on Instagram if you follow me there, but I don't know. I don't know what I got time for. So, but I will keep you updated about my progress. 
Now, the 10 items I listed today, and that's what I like too, is like when I'm doing a theme, it doesn't have to all be in the same category. So say I am doing like owls, right? I've got some home decor, I've got some vintage fabric, I've got some jewelry, I've got, you know, when I did Western, it was jewelry, it was scarves, it was collectibles, it was restaurant wear, all the different types of items that kind of fit that theme. Now I could do a day where I just say, you know what, I'm going to do gold tone brooches or, you know, mid-century style jewelry and like do a day of that. So the possibilities are endless. Now today, I don't know exactly what you would call this theme. What I did is I had a few things like that were sitting out that I had sourced recently and I thought, you know what, I want to get those listed. And so then I just kind of picked 10 items that kind of went along with it. So I have these two little boxes, these little trinket boxes. And as you can see, they are both made in Japan. You know, they're not high quality awesomeness, but they're vintage, probably 60s or so. And, you know, they have their little trinket, trinket things. They have the red velvet inside. Um, you know, I listed these. They're kind of chippy, shabby. Um, which is a look a lot of people go for, but I, let's see, this one had a little bit of rust inside on the hinges, but the red fabric was pretty good. I think I did $20 on that one. And then I just did 16 on this one. It, this one does have some marks and, you know, on the red velvet, you're not gonna be able to see it, but Anyway, I just think they're pretty. I got them at a yard sale. It was like a classic Montana yard sale. And I really wish, I'm not good at recording myself going places, but I really wish I had done it that day. It was down this long, long road, long driveway, total classic Montana ranch. And then the farmer was older, an older gentleman, classic Montana. He's been farming that land for a while. Um, but he had these little trinket boxes out there. So I did, of course, also buy um, some Pendleton and Western Pendleton, and I bought Western Carhartt, um, and he just made me a bundle deal for about $20. So I don't have a lot of money into these, and so I just kind of want to move them on to a new home. The other, th Another thing he had that I listed today was actually really good. He had a brass... A table in his barn that he had collected up a bunch of brass and there was a couple silver plated type things in there now I saw this tea infuser this tea ball and it was all tarnished but I had a feeling I popped it open I looked around the rim and I saw writing now of course I don't bring my reading glasses I don't I didn't my hands were full of brass other brass things so I took a chance and I just added it to my pile. And sure enough, it's sterling. It's international sterling, um, but it also has the mark for Watrous, the Watrous or Waitress, no, Watrous Silver Company, which was, I discovered from my research, was part of, became part of the International Silver Company in 1898. Now, the source I found said that they didn't really start doing sil sterling items until the 20s. So it's after that a little bit. But very cool um, tea infuser. It has a few little dents and dings. I listed that for about $45, $46. And um, we'll see how that does. I know these can be fairly collectible for people, especially the ones that are shaped like shaped like a house or shaped like a teapot. Um, anyway, he, he, we did another kind of like bulk price on the brass and metal items. So I think I paid 15 for the different brass things plus this. Okay. So the same day when I went to that yard sale, I just went to a little thrift store and I found this serving fork and it has this awesome mother of pearl, very natural looking handle to it. Now this part right here, the ferrule, ferrule, ferrule. Um, is sterling, but the rest of the fork is silver plated. And it's just marked standard SP company. Um, I looked up on one of the silver websites and it's they just said it's kind of an unknown mark, unknown maker. 
standard silver plate company, but they didn't know much about it. But I just could not pass up this fork. It was just mixed in with the regular flatware at the thrift store. I probably paid a dollar or two because they kind of, they do the prices when you get up to the counter. And so they might have charged me like for a utensil. The only other piece of flatware I I did was just this pretty Oneida stainless sugar shell or sugar spoon. It's Oneida Deluxe Stainless and the pattern is called Mozart, which is a, a fairly popular Oneida pattern to keep in mind. Did do, um, I listed a necklace as well. This is, it's made to look like the style of what's called camphor glass. That's a whole nother subject I can't go into today. But anyway, the um, I, I'll put up the word up here, camphor glass, if you want to do any research on it. The company, it's signed copyright A-R-T or ART, and that stands for Arthur Pepper um, is the designer or the maker on that. So he does a lot of revival um, style pieces and are like Victorian revival, Art Deco revival, all that kind of thing. And just a very pretty, delicate necklace that I think someone will be interested in. This bell I showed you, I'm pretty sure, was in that $5 haul. This is that bell that's made by Limoges. And prices are made in Limoges. Um, the name on it is Bernardod. Bernardog. Bernard <laughs> um, made in France and sold the only solds I found for just this bell by itself with the strawberries on it were like once 13 and once 32 the 32 might have been free shipping I just kind of went in the middle like I did 15 plus shipping I want my stuff to move I want it to sell and I just think that's very pretty I added these couple little fun things if you remember the um, 90s and cinch clips. I picked these up at a little antique mall for I think a dollar a piece. I just listed them for about 10 or 12 dollars a piece. Um, this one's kind of fun. The black beads are like uh, black velvet. Um, but if you remember, you can see in the picture, if you remember dresses, like your big sundresses, you could cinch up the back or a jacket, you could cinch up the back. And they're also showing it as like a sweater guard, you know, that if you had a cardigan, you could just clip the two things of the cardigan together to keep it on you. So anyway, it's showing for both of those. I believe these are like from the 90s themselves, like from back then. Um, they do sell them now. Like I looked up Cinch Clip and Amazon has a bunch and everything. So I don't have like definitive proof. They just have that look like this one has a little bit of discoloration age to it. So I'm thinking these are from back in the day. Then the only other thing to show you, this is something my son picked up. It's like a milk glass, but it has more of an opalescent. You can kind of see a bluish tinge to it. And it is by Macbeth Evans. And the, the pattern's called American Sweetheart. But the material, you know, it gets called milk glass, but the material is proprietary, I think, to them called Monax, M-O-N-A-X. Now, this is just the research I did yesterday. I am not a glass person. Glass is like my least known subject. Um, but my son, he's 11, was into milk glass and finding it at yard sales and things like that. So he picked this one up and then he decided he was kind of done with his collection. And I said, you know what, we'll just throw that for sale and see how we do. Um, I just have it listed for $12. So it's very pretty. I like that, you know, kind of clam broth kind of look to it, but that's, you know, clam broth is something different. Anyway, um, so those are the things I listed this morning. And I keep saying this morning, but it was like early afternoon. I don't even know what time it is right now. And I need to go eat lunch. So anyway, that's my challenge. If any of you want to join me, I know it's kind of last minute, but don't feel like you have to do 100 items. Just see 
maybe set yourself a goal for the end of the month and just kind of see how you do. Leave a comment down below if you want to join in or if you um, have done challenges like this before in the past and, you know, how did it go? Did it, you know, kind of reinvigorate you? I'm, I'm feeling kind of positive about it that hopefully this will kind of keep me interested and keep me going. I have a bunch of other things on my plate till the end of the month and I just decided to do this anyway because the busier I am the more I get done isn't that true okay I'm gonna get going sorry if I talk too fast and I will I will see you later in the week I will have another video that's not um related to the challenge or anything like that but um I better go get back to work I'll talk to you later